Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Some of us will spend our whole life trying to find out what it is that we were created for. And, and, we, and, and some of us will run away from the very thing we were created for because we're too, too afraid uh, of, of the task or of the purpose. And some of us will never find it. Amen? And so I want to be like the one that really wants to know what God wants to do with my life. What, what did you make me for, God? Why, why am I here? Amen? And sometimes I'll even ask that question to God because I know that he has the answer. Amen? He has the answer that I'm looking for. Right? Because I need to know. Amen? Do you need to know this morning? And so uh, it's interesting in verse 22 it says, it says, Jesus says to the woman at the well, this is a great, great uh, story. I don't have enough time to preach the whole chapter to you, but Jesus says to, to the woman at the well, he says, you don't even know who you worship, but we, he's talking about the Jews, know who we worship. And I, I, think, I think that really brings to, to, to light a great question. Do we know who we're worshiping? I, I, I think if, I've gone to church for uh, 40 plus years, okay? Actually, my whole life before I got saved. I got saved when I was 11, okay? When I've been in church, uh, uh, that's just what I do. I go to church. And I've always gone to church. And I mean, I've skipped sometimes, you know. I've run away from God a couple times. And, and yet I always come back to Him because God has called me to this place, to this position, to break through church. And, and, and it's important for you to know that you're called into this room today. God brought you here for a very specific reason. And I, I think it's important for us to know the difference, amen? We should know the difference uh, uh, so that we can know, amen? We need to know, amen? I just need to know the difference uh, of who I'm worshiping. Uh, uh, I, I love the, the, uh, the, the, the thing, uh, the, the word shall and the shall and the word must, okay? When we read this scripture because uh, the hour cometh, right? Uh, and, 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 and it says in verse 22, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers Okay, who wants to be a true worshiper? Amen. We all want to say, that's me. I'm going to buy the t-shirt. Amen. True worshiper. I'm a true worshiper. Uh, it says, shall worship. Did you, did you notice that? Shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. And I always preach this, this, this verse. I talk about this verse a lot. I don't often bring it out into a message, maybe very specifically. But if you notice in that verse, verse 23 there, it says in spirit and in truth. That means my spirit and my truth have to line up in order, uh, uh, line up with what God is doing. The real, real spirit, the big ass spirit, they have to line up so that, so that I can stand before God. Because you know, you all know those people, right? They come to church and they're, they're like worshiping God and they're, they're, like, they're like all this in, in, in front of everybody. And then they walk out the door and they, they, you know, they make three steps out the door and they're already cussing out their kids, okay? Is that a true worshiper? Is that truth? Is that spirit and truth? No, that's not spirit and truth. That's an act, okay, that we've seen in the building. And I don't want to be around a bunch of people that want to act like Christians, amen? I don't want to be around a bunch of people that want to say one thing and live another thing, amen? That's, that's a divisive thing, right? That means there's the vision, amen? Two separate visions of what God is trying to do in an individual, amen? Because we are, we are, we are, his child, amen? So, and then it says must, right? In verse, uh, in verse 24, it says uh, God is a spirit, the big ass spirit, right? And there's that, there's that uh, coal in there, and it says, and they that worship him, this is the, the prerequisite for worship, amen? When you're going to look at worship, you got to say, you got to look at this, and it says, they that worship him, I highlighted that in my Bible. Maybe, maybe that's a good, good time to write. I believe you should write in your Bible. I believe you should scribble notes in it. I believe that you should put it on the margins and then on the back cover and the front cover. I think you should write it in there. Uh, it, says, it says, and they that worship him must. Say, say must with me. Must. Must worship him in spirit and truth. That's the way it is. That's the, that's the, the, the key. If you're going to worship God, if you're going to worship him, really, if you're really going to worship him, you must worship him in spirit and truth. Amen. So last week we talked about the heart and, uh, uh, and I, I related it really specifically to marriage. And I, and I, I asked you, uh, I actually, I declared to you that you should never take uh, marriage advice from someone who, who doesn't have good relationships. Okay. Uh, uh, I've been married for 35 years and you may not like my, 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 my advice that I give you. And I'm not asking you to like my advice, but I am asking you to take marriage relationship 
because uh, we are the bride of Christ, right? The church is the bride of Christ. So we should take uh, our advice, our, our marriage relationship, all right, from the word of God, amen, from Jesus, because Jesus was the word made flesh, amen, and so that the, when he speaks, amen, we should move, amen, he, we should change, we should become something that we weren't before, amen, we should move, amen, I want to move today, I want to move off of where I was, I don't want to go out the door this morning the same way I came in, I want to go out the door changed, I want to be changed somehow, even if it's just a little bit. I want, I want to give God the power. Jesus, I want you to come and change me this morning. Amen? So, so <laughs> how's your relationship with God? <laughs> I got a medal, okay? I got a medal. How is it? I mean, did you talk to him this week at all? Did you, did you read his word at all this week? Did you think about him? Because <laughs> some of us only think about him when we come to church. We think about him uh, a couple hours before we got up. We, we don't think about him every minute of every day. We don't actually walk with God. We just go see him every once in a while, right? How, how, much, how, much, how much intimacy are you going to have, right, in your marriage relationship if you only go and see him once in a while? Come on. You got you to you continue the, to go, go home every day, right? You got to continue to... You know, love them when they don't look lovable, you know. You got you to gotta continue to go and be a part of a, a, their daily life. You got to think about them. You got to uh, spend your money <laughs> with your, on your wife. You know, you got to, you got to, you got to, it, it involves every detail of your life. Being married involves every detail, amen? There's not a single moment of the day that I can never say, I'm not married right now. <laughs> Although we act that way, right? We do. We really act that way because sometimes, you know, we have impure thoughts. Come on. We have, we have uh, uh, words that come out that don't, don't edify our, our mate, right? We have, we have uh, I'm just speaking from personal experience, you know? I, I just got all these problems in my life, and, and you know what? There's not a single one of us, if we're really honest, that don't have a problem here or there, okay? And don't have a, don't have a trial, don't have a circumstance, don't have something that we continually trip over in our life. And, and so, true worship is, is not the absence of temptation, okay? True worship is, is it's not the absence of temp, temptation. It's, it, it is in the presence of, of trials, come on, th that we remain focused on the king. See, that's what real worship looks like. It, like, like I, I know I'm going to be tempted. I know I'm going to have trials. I know I'm going to go through stuff. But I'm always going to be focused on the king this morning, amen? That's, that's, that's what, it's, it's in the remaining to be focused in the remaining, in the, in the staying, in the, in the coming home every day, right? It, it's, it's, it's always good to know that what we see with our eyes, we're not ever going to be satisfied with any of those things. The only thing that will ever satisfy you is Jesus Christ, amen? Luke 4, verse 4, uh, Luke 4, verse 8, and Luke 4, verse 12, we see uh, the devil come to te tempt Jesus, okay? And he tempted him uh, with with. Uh, with the lust of the flesh, the pleasure, desire, or pleasure of the flesh. He, he tempted him. Uh, uh, he tempted him with the with what he saw with his eyes, and he also tempted him with the pride of life. Those are the sa same temptations that we will have in our own life. Amen. There is there is uh, every temptation that we have. Jesus had the same temptation. Amen. There was not any different. Uh, the devil don't have a new trick. Okay. The devil don't have new ways. He's got the same old uh, trick, the same old scheme, the same old distraction that he's always had. He's always looking, right, to, to trip you up with the same stuff that he tried to trip, trip Jesus up with. And we can see some of the answers that Jesus had. I'm not going to preach all that to you today. I just want to, to give you that for a reference. <laughs> if you really understood, I'm going to ask you a question. If you really understood what worship was, what it really is, would you alter your, your routine? That's a question I want to ask you. Would you alter your, your routine in your worship if you really understood what worship was and what it is? See? See, why do we worship? I'm asking a bunch of questions, okay? I want you to answer them. You can write them down if you want. Why do we worship? What do we worship? How often are we actually worshiping? These are all good questions, Pastor Everett. Is, is, there, is there a routine to your worship? 
Is your, you know, <clears throat> when I get ready to preach, um, I have routine, okay? Like, uh, I, I, I go through this routine, and I, I found myself, right, like in a routine, and I, 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 before service, I go and I separate myself, and I'll go pray a prayer, and in the praying of the prayer, I found that it was a routine, right? It was a same old prayer, same old time, and so the last, uh, I don't know, six or eight weeks, six weeks maybe, uh, I started to uh, play like a different song, like, like I, won't, I won't play necessarily a worship song. One time I played an old gospel hymn, and uh, when I was playing the gospel hymn, it was like, I don't even like this song at all, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> and I realized that, that, you know, because I want to shift my routine a little bit, I don't want to be religious, okay? I want to have relationship. And so, so routines are good, but they're not really going to enhance your relationship. Matter of fact, you're never going to grow if you always have the same routine over and over. If I just pray the way I always prayed, I'll, I'll never grow. If I always go hang out with the same people I always hang out with, guess what? I'm never going to get any new friends. Matter of fact, I'll always, I'll always be like I always am because that's, my, that's who I'm comfortable with. I want to I wanna go someplace where I'm not comfortable, amen? I want to grow, amen? Growing always causes you to be uncomfortable. You know, I used to work out. I used to. I don't now. I now I go by the gym. I just drive right by it. Uh, but but I I do I did I used to lift weights and I was I was uh, I noticed that you never grow your muscle, all right? If you only lift the five pound dumbbells, right? You're in there with the five pound dumbbells and you're just like ah, oh, oh, it's a good workout. You know, you don't even get no blood pumping through your body. You got to get some some twenty five pounders or some forty pounders. You know, uh, I. Uh, the best I ever did, my best, my personal best was two 115s, okay, each hand. That's 230, you know, two dumbbells like that. I did it six times, and I dropped them on the floor, and I never picked them back up. <laughs> but, but, but I'm going to tell you that, that I'll never get back there if I don't go back there, amen? And I start to stretch myself a little bit, start to grow myself a little bit, start to identify uh, hang-ups that I have, Amen. Because I have hang-ups. I don't know, maybe I'll just turn around like this because none of you got hang-ups. But, but it, we all have a hang-up, really. We have hang-ups and we have, we have uh, routines in our life. We have things that we keep on going through over and over and over and over and over. Does worship make you uncomfortable? Amen? Worship should make you uncomfortable because you should, you should push past what your comfortable, comfort zone is, right? I, I know there are some people that can't even lift their arms. They, they're like... They're like I want to lift my arms, but somebody's going to look at me different. Or some others will do this, you know. And then others maybe will do this. And then some of us will go, and some of us will be like run up to the altar and, and lay down in front of the Lord and just like give everything to Him. And that's, that's really what He deserves, amen? He deserves everything. He deserves my whole life. He des deserves me to move past my pride, amen? And so, so, <sighs> I guess most of us... <laughs> I'm going to say this, okay? Most of us come to church. We come to church, <laughs> tore up from the floor up. <laughs> and we're expecting God to fix it. That's what we do. We come in, and we're like, I just got out of here. I barely made it through the week. Ah. And, we, and we, look like, we look like we tore up from the floor up because we're not, we're not even here, most of us. We don't even, we're not even here. We're just like, ah. But that's not victorious walk with God, amen? That's not real worship with God. Amen. Worship doesn't happen on Sunday morning. It happens every day of your life. Amen. Uh, someone, someone uh, really smart, this is a quote, they said, they're tired of giving mouth to mouth to dead fish. Right? Sometimes on uh, uh, worship leaders, they'll get up here and they'll, they'll be like, <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know. And everybody's out there like, really? <laughs> and you know what? We should come in energized, ready to worship God ready to give him praise, ready to give him all that we have. Amen? It's not our responsibility to jumpstart dead fish on Sunday mornings. What if we're supposed to worship from a full position instead of an empty position? What if we're supposed to worship from a full position and not an empty position? What if that's what real worship looks like? See, it's the rich versus the poor scenario, right? I come into church, I'm full of, the, full of the, the spirit of the living God. I come into church excited about what God has done all week long. I come into church 
thanking him for taking me through some trials, amen? Thanking him for giving me enough money to put gas in my gas tank. Thanking him for, for, for enough favor, amen, to, to, to have one friend in my life. Maybe I only have one good friend in my life, but I thank him that he brought me to this moment. I thank him that he walked with me through every circumstance. I thank him that I can walk through the door, that I can blink my eyelids, amen? That I can lift my hands, that I can still wiggle my fingers, amen, my toes. I thank him that I had a bed to sleep in. I thank him that I had food on my table. I thank him because he's with me, amen? And I, I come in full, and I want to give him my worship, amen, and my praise, amen?